Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new review. Behind me is the new Peugeot E208 fully electric. We also reviewed last time the E2008. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that. Click the bell to get a notifications when I upload a new video. There's going to be also point of view driving, uh, night point of view driving. Uh, we're going to take a, a full review of the exterior interior and the infotainment in this video. So let's, without further ado, jump in the review. Okay, everyone, here is the new Peugeot E208. This is a small B segment uh, city hatchback, fully electric vehicle, and it's a very gorgeous car uh, when we look at the design. Um, so uh, let's first summon all the technical data. So it has a 50 kilowatt hour battery, 45 is usable. Um, maximum charging uh, speed is 100 kilowatt hours. Um, you can pass with a battery uh, 340 kilometers. Uh, if you go a little bit faster, it's more like 275 the range. Uh, top speed is 250, 252 in my test. Uh, then you reach the software limitation and the uh, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour is in 8.1 seconds. And this is equivalent to 136 horsepower. Um, so uh, for this size of the car, it's really nippy, especially in the sport, but it's also very good in the normal and there's this eco, uh, eco drive. Uh, this is the alert package. Uh, there is a like, um, active, allure, GT line and GT. GT is 38,000 euros. Uh, wait, don't be afraid. Uh, the base package is 13 and 500. Uh, this alert package uh, is um, 17,600 if I'm not mistaken. And then this car has blue paint option and 10 inch uh, screen and folding mirrors as an option, I believe. Now, without uh, without all out of the way technical data, and yeah, the weight is ton and um, I think it was 300. Uh, I'm gonna correct myself if I'm wrong. Okay, so let's see the key. Uh, keys a little bit bulky design. You have a line on the back. Um, it's not too heavy, not too light. Uh, lock, unlock button, and you can turn on the lights. Uh, you can move this guy, extend the physical key. So let's see the light lights. Uh, very nice. These are the base LED lights. I would upgrade the lights to be honest uh, to the um, ones with the lens, also LED. Um, so uh, let's take a look at the front. I really like the design of this car uh, and this Alliant theme. You have like this teeth or claws, I'm not really sure. Um, so uh, this alert package is a little bit different from the 2008 I reviewed, also in the same alert package. Now, I like the front bumper. Um, you get this horizontal lines in the color of the vehicle and in the GT it would be uh, um, uh, vertical. Now this car doesn't have front parking sensors. I don't think even doesn't have the front radar. Um, I think you need to go for a higher package for that or pick it as an option. Uh, I like the blue color, it's a metallic and then you have this black arches kind of gives it a little bit sportier look. And then, um, the alloys you get the doesn't matter what the package is it's 16 inch just had to get a different design these are the continental tires winter tires winter contact um ts uh, 860 i think and the tire dimensions are 90 uh, 195 55 r16 if you're interested if we look at the side profile of the car it is really elegant uh, and sporty I like the spoiler on the end in black as well. Uh, I like the tinted windows, also standard in this package. You have the E on the back, not on the front, like on the uh, E2008, and just come to the front. So you can see Peugeot LED technology. So uh, the only bulb is the turn signal, the rest is LED. You don't have front fogs um, on this model. Uh, you can see the camera for the lane assist uh, ring and light sensor and have a little classic antenna a nice spoiler extending although the water is dripping always so you have to use the rear wiper uh, often and over here we have the E nice and if I unlock the car just to show you the mirrors unfold and the charging port uh, so this is your uh, AC combined is DC fast charging and you have here like uh, for the charging 
I guess the car locks itself when you start charging. You can guess I have a timer. Here you can see uh, some information for the charging. Uh, I love the 3D lights. Um, if I turn them on, again, you can see here. And then you can see the turn signal. The car locked itself when you leave, but it doesn't unlock when you come close. You have to manually use the key. Um, I like these lights, They're very nice and distinctive. Also like a claw. Um, I like the bottom, uh, the black and this in black, it kind of really looks sporty. And you have this like two tips uh, and the fog light on the bottom. You have the rear parking centers as you can see them. And uh, I like the fact on the front and rear, you have the line here differently in this Torquist color. To emphasize this is an electric car in case you missed it and you have this elegant Peugeot. Uh, on the bottom is the uh, fish eye lens 180 degrees but it's because of the angle uh, there's sometimes droplets here so you can't really see that good. It doesn't have a nozzle to wash. You have LED license plates on the bottom and you open here. So if we open so the car locked itself again. Use the key. Unlock. So I'm going to just back up so you can see the whole car in the frame. I'm in a different location today, uh, less noise around me. Now uh, the cargo space is 265 liters and if you knock down the seats, 1,106 liters. So for a small city uh, hatchback, this is kind of decent space. You can put a carry-on, uh, maybe one bag, some groceries, it's not that bad. You close it up manually on the top here. You have this rubber so this doesn't rattle. Uh, I wouldn't fit an umbrella here. So let's see inside a grocery hook on the right. Um, nothing over here. One light on the left. No grocery hook on this side, but you have this strip. This is like in Croatia emergency triangle first aid. This is my bag. Uh, this bag is your home outlet, European standard and for charging at home. And then you get this uh, for public charging stations cable for those who are slower up to 11 kilowatt hours and then you have here this like uh, carpets because we have all weather mats for the winter and then a fast extinguisher and a patching kit small area on the bottom uh, seats knocked down 60 40 and you have to go around to uh, unlock them the height here hmm five and then maybe ten fingers of height and that's it um, so close it up closes nicely um, one critic uh, the, when you slowing down with recuperation uh, the brake light doesn't turn on it should on all electric vehicles so Peugeot should uh, really do something about that now uh, I've seen this happen I'm not sure if this is like from washing the car or is it the sun? The car has almost 6,000 kilometers, so the suppressed car was used a lot. So, unlock sound, closing sound, the door is pretty good. Um, we have seal here, we have a extra seal, double seal here. Uh, you can put a roof rack, I believe, here. Um, so, yeah. And I like the fact uh, you can close here for the child seat with a key. I like its contrasting color. Uh, the doors could open a little bit wider for a child seat. Now, hard plastic, piano black. Um, this is nice and soft leather, contrast stitching, electronic windows, small pocket here and a speaker. Uh, this is a little bit really narrow to get inside. I don't think like you can put a child, kids on the back. I wouldn't put a taller person like maybe an average adult could fit. A nice smooth uh, leather contrast stitching, some a nice cloth. The seats are really comfortable. Uh, French cars are really always on the comfortable side. They go a little bit in uh, on the bottom end. The top uh, over here, you unzip this and then you can put a anchor uh, for the isofix. Over here, you also have the headrests. You can push them down here. Then if you want to knock down the seats, uh, the seat belt will go in the way, as you can see. You can see the cargo space on the back, and then you put it like this, and then just close it up, and it's fixed. So, um, I was sitting on the front. So, uh, have in mind, I'm two meters tall, or 6.6 .6 in feet. Nice uh, floor mat. So, I'm just gonna jump inside quickly. 
so it's a little bit tight uh, even the seat I went really down because I like to be lower so not much room you have here big pocket um, so for the knees um, it's a squeeze tight for me maybe if I go like this I can fit let's hear the closing sound it's very good now you don't have any more adjustable seat belts this is a cloth and then you can here control the front arm uh, excuse me headrest uh, but it's a nice leather and this contrast stitching or here you have two USB a chargers fast charging for the rear passengers no AC and then you have this like a transmission tunnel but uh, it's a battery underneath it goes a little bit wide so it's probably because there's a IC like petrol and diesel versions this is probably left over for that uh, middle seat is nice and comfy but I wouldn't fit a fifth person uh, or third person on the back for a longer journey it's a really tight space they have this for your elbow which is nice you have a tall window but if the seat is way back this is going to be a little bit problem for the blind spot uh overview on the back is good now you have this slowly closing hooks only not on the driver's side this is the front look and so um to show you myself so this is if i want to straight up it's not possible if i would be an average person i would barely fit so I would have enough room for my head uh the headliner does go up as you can see so let's exit the car so i'm a little bit taller than the average person so I probably won't be spending a lot of time on the back seat um on the front if you deplete a 12 volt battery you can unlock with a physical key and the mirror doesn't have a physical blind spot unfortunately but you can see the turn signal towards the driver although i think it wasn't meant to be then you have a bottle light here and a little wind deflector over there so opening closing sound is pretty solid again a seal roof rack uh this is good the front doors open really wide maybe even more than necessary uh, because i'm going to show you when we go to closing uh, hard plastic on the front as well probably weight reduction carbon fiber a little uh, piano black in this it's a different color depending on the um, package you choose it's matching this stitches um, this is nice and soft also matching stitch you can lock the rear when the car is on control the mirrors uh, nice bottle area it doesn't rattle too much um, nice speaker on the bottom and we have the um, plastic doorstep the seats are manual i believe you can always get an electronic option i prefer this is for up and down this is push up and then slide back and forward and then you have the here for the tilt they don't have a lumbar support but these are really one of the most comfortable most comfortable seats they have a good uh, sponge they have this bolsters as well and they have this big area for your uh your back so there's no uh, I, i've been for a longer journey this car is really comfortable uh notice we have here like a leather and then a cloth in the middle also the armrest uh, cloth and leather on the top um, this is all automatics basically electric cars one only gear over here you have a, a light height uh, lane assist on or off uh, you can put here here if kind of the battery goes low uh, this you have a button here here and then on the top and the bottom up is for cruise control uh, low is i mean bottom for um, speed uh, limitation you have here memory set uh, the camera will struggle to focus it's going to be focusing on the steering wheel but you can see there if it will focus it doesn't want to focus there we go um, i don't want to mainly focus because it's gonna freak out later um, okay so let's jump inside i'm gonna pop the hood later so you can see i'm a tall person but still have to reach out far away we have some warning here and then good closing sound all of the bottle kind of made some sound i wasn't making before so it's a good closing sound uh, the car is maybe a little bit tilted because of the road terrain so it made a little bit rattle sound so switching to my wide lens 
there we go this is some sort of point of view and it's a good overview you can see the hood good in the mirrors and in the middle mirror but the steering wheel in peugeot is a little bit lower than usual i even lowered it a little bit more because of my point of view i'm gonna film so there's gonna be that on the channel so make sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when i upload that video and you have the virtual uh, 3d cockpit on the top for the speedometer and this is a 10 inch screen uh but let's zoom in so steering wheel nice leather black stitching little piano black not a huge fan uh it's flat on the bottom and the top and then you have round uh, edges on the sides a nice aluminium peugeot a little line here horn uh this is nice and rubbery this is for the uh, menus on the top plus and minus for the obviously volume voice commands phone calls uh, this is for the radio list source um, shortcuts um, light controls so just leave it on auto this is position the lights on and then this is like rear fog on or off there's a button here i'm not really sure what it does i haven't managed to figure out with that one i'll leave a comment below if you know what it does and now over here um, of course you have your wiper controls sorry uh, so you have intervals and then you push down for automatic wipers on or once more for off and then the rear wiper uh, on or next one would be uh, like washing and of course you pull towards yourself to wash the front um ac closed or open uh, nice aluminium detail uh, you have another extra speaker on the a pillar you have a 3d cockpit there's a screen here and on the top and combine it creates a 3d three-dimensional effect uh, the top of the dash is soft the rest is hard plastic has like two layers again depending on the package you get a different texture this is like a carbon fiber imitation um old piano black on the top here uh 10 inch screen again navigation there's an option start stop engine uh, this is probably because of the classical um also diesel and petrol option and i dislike the fact you have to press and hold it it doesn't just press turn it on or off uh ac vents on the bottom so uh closed and open just gonna put them down so when i turn it on it doesn't blow into the microphone over here we have shortcuts nice physical buttons but sometimes they're far away to reach um you only press them down not from the top so this is for the ac mostly close recirculation off uh, max blow uh hazards a lock unlock the car really has a uh, funky uh, sound for the hazards unlock the 2008 lock and lock the car um front blow maximum uh maximum blow and rear defrost and you have this touch uh shortcuts we're gonna cover it later uh, going on the bottom we have a usb c fast charger a usb a it's not fast charging for some reason again piano black fingerprint magnet dust on the bottom scratches easily not a huge fan uh nicely slowly opens wireless charging you can put your phone here if you want to see the screen and um, unfortunately no light illumination here in the dark not even over here this is plastic but a distant space 12 volt outlet and uh, continuing to the automatic again one gear only park uh, you have to press to put to uh, drive from park uh, if you want to go to reverse you also have to press go to reverse but if you're in reverse you can just pull towards yourself to go to neutral drive or once again for uh, braking so in drive you coast easily recuperates with the engine and in brake it breaks more with the engine electric motor actually uh, and uh, recuperates more aggressively or brakes more aggressively but it doesn't turn on the brake light for some reason again this is very nicely ergonomically made has this good sounds when you push it uh, electronic parking brake driving mode there's echo normal and sport um i wish there was an auto hold option uh cup holders have two heights doesn't have those dots so you can unscrew it or to adjust uh on the size of the cup um this is nice and soft you can extend it doesn't have levels you have a little cubby here it's kind of rubberized and then have a decent storage big storage here so plastic key there's some parking cars on the bottom there 
and the seats are nice and comfy really good sponges and i really like the uh, colors of this looks really really pretty much elegant now um not to forget the nice low the opening armor uh, excuse me glove compartment um so we have the here deep storage inside and there we can really fit a lot of stuff but doesn't have uh, any illumination inside or ac for some reason that really doesn't make sense okay turning to myself so you can see plenty of headroom for myself um on the front you can see my knees are kind of close they're hitting into this and again the steering wheel is a little bit lower than um i wanted because of the filming of the point of view so if you're a tall person uh this area on the bottom is really shallow i wish it was a little bit deeper so uh let's finish up because the car is kind of fogging should turn on the ac have a nice uh, big mirror has a frame and this is i believe a camera for monitoring the driver so it doesn't, if, you, if you're getting sleepy, it alerts you. You have here airbag information, uh, lights that are bright. And 2008, it was LED. And this one, you can turn them on only if the car is on. On the back, there's actually no lights uh, on the roof. Uh, for the rear passengers, Peugeot and uh, guest service and emergency call in case of an accident um, or if you get stranded on the road. Um, personal uh, mirror. A document holder you can put this but it doesn't extend unfortunately and uh, the little con is this mirror is a little bit far up down so it's kind of creating a blind spot for the traffic lights in some situations um, I mentioned the a pillar uh, and that's pretty much it so um, again good overview from the side as mentioned and now let's start our her up so you have to press and hold. Now I haven't touched the brake. I've got test lights on the side. I'm just gonna turn on the AC, Peugeot, and it's gonna defog uh, real fast. So, um, yeah, also this button is for showing you over here in the main screen, you can change some information. So let's focus on the 3D cockpit first. Now I'm gonna press this one and control these. So this is driving. So this is like classical, excuse me, um, I've kind of moved it to, okay, dials. This is like a classical, you have this like a revs, oh, but there are no revs, it's just copy from the classical car. You have power, echo, charge when you're in driving modes. Uh, you can see here like uh, status of charge, you can see only the range, which changes depending on the driving mode. Uh, and there's no percentage. The only percentage you can see where the car is plugged in and charging on the station or at home and you can only like calculate approximately how much charge you have left um, next one is driving so this one is you can see the car you can see the lanes um, you can always see the odometer that's good some cars hide that uh, navigation one of my favorite and best you can see the streets uh, when you have a route then it turns blue and when you turn you can see that shadow it's really one of my favorite this is like unique to the Peugeot only and then this is the minimum <clears throat> you can see like the speed only on the sides and then personal one shows you uh, current information and then you can uh, with this button cycle through the current information a trip this is like a trip but I didn't figure out how to reset it if you hold nothing happens and then you can switch like the total trip and over here you would see current information like current <clears throat> uh, power you're using oh actually you do reset it by holding it long for trip one so this is like total trip trip one is your current trip okay excellent um, switching to the personal two over here you can see the radio uh, you can also change in the main screen to have different information driver alert or <clears throat> consumption and energy flow Kind of shows you the car and then you can also calculate uh, you can see here energy flow in the car is recuperating or using power and then if you see battery like half of it i think that would be like approximately 50 percent um so to kind of remote activated so the car sees that i'm not operating it so i'm going to press the brake see what happens and then i'm going to press the start so you have to hold it 
Okay, now it says ready and it's on. So I'm just gonna switch to the, I'm just gonna leave it over there. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, let's see this one, uh, the one on the top. So um, an, a little con is that you don't have uh, like a menu you only have you only like a home menu you always stay on the same screen so uh, you can use this touch presets so we're now currently on music uh, you can use the one on the buttons on the steering wheel or use this you can press it to mute it has a nice clicky sound it's rubbery so let's press to mute i can't play too long but i think the speakers are quite decent you have here FM DAB radio. You have here options. Um, this is kind of suiting for a <laughs> French car, uh, but we're not gonna play that. Um, you can have here presets, you can have a list. Uh, also, if you press here list, it brings you to the same, and then you can control here uh, what you want. Um, now, there is a hidden menu. If you press three fingers, that I didn't notice in 2008, you get this menu and then it goes off. But you can like press here, switch to navigation. So it's like a quick menu because you can uh, easily reach the screen rather than some buttons sometimes. Now, um, to cover the cover the navigation, I'm gonna go really fast because there's a lot of options. Uh, you can watch them in the 2008 if you really wanna see. It's using TomTom Tom traffic. Now over here we have some information just pause to read and you could change the daytime uh, or I like uh, map color daytime uh, or night you have here menus as well and then you have here in the settings uh, you have lots of options you have alerts if you have this on a risk alert it's gonna detect all the cameras and keep beeping it's very annoying um, but you can turn it off there you have here 3d um, and of course you can see a lot of buildings, terrain map, and this is like 2D, you can see charging stations and you can see the blue bubble is where you can reach with the current state of charge and you can see some uh, weather information as well. Um, and you can see here red is like where it's slow traffic, stuff like that. On the side you always have AC, you have a temperature, outside temperature and a clock. You can press here to go to the AC or you can um, press and then go to climate. Then you have this air blow information, AC on off, automatic blow. You can control the fan speed and the temperature. And options here, you can have uh, soft, strong, or uh, you know medium, whatever. Temperature conditioning, you can have the climate on when the car is unlocked, uh, if you want that. And over here, you have a gear selector on the sides. You can turn off the screen if you want one more minimalist when you're driving or to clean it off. Have a multiple driver profiles. You over here have audio settings. You can control all these. Uh, control where you want uh, or what kind of uh, music type you want to listen to. We have balance to uh, which spot, uh, touch volumes, ringtones, stuff like that. And then here in the options, have system settings. You can control these. Pause if you want to read them. Languages um, in control here. Uh, system settings, screen configuration, you can control the animation, the brightness, and over here, infotainment. Here we can have trip and personal two, like what you see, all of those, and then here, uh, all of those. So there's like kind of dip menus, I'm not gonna go through all of that, but um, if you press three times here, you can go to phone, you can connect it via Bluetooth, or um, yeah. Uh, also, if you go to the radio, uh, you can uh, have here, um, you can control like via Bluetooth, via uh, USBs, you can play a list uh, actually here in the source. Yeah, you can see those. Okay, so again, three fingers, kind of faster than touching these on the bottom. So you have vehicle settings, pause to read, there's informations here, and parking, you can set those, headlights, comfort, and like in headlights, you can like always press on the gear selector and have different options and over here as well. Um, so, and last is here. Okay, so you have apps. You can use uh, My Peugeot app. And you can see the status of the charge of the car, control the climate, stuff like that. Um, and you can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is really nice. So you can use Waze or 
um, a Google Maps, uh, which is, uh, what is good, I noticed the navigation so shows you the speed traps, so that's the standard navigation, that is. And uh, for the last, uh, you can see here the flow, and you can see a normal, so we press on the bottom of this guy, you can see it switches to sport, also shows here, normal echo, and it changes the range estimate, so you can see it switches to 60, uh, the information says it just turns off the heating and uh, you can see here now in sport it's going to recalculate less range. The car is really an EPN uh, sport, it's really nice. Um, again, electric, no percentage of the battery and you cannot control charging, you can only set the time when you're charging but you cannot set how much percentage, like if you want to charge to only 80. Uh, statistics, over here you would see your current uh, energy consumption. Uh, green is braking, blue is uh, using the power. You can change like the minutes here as well. And over here you can see the flow. Green is when you're uh, recuperating, blue is when you're using or when you're coasting. And um, that's it. So um, now I'm gonna switch the car to, you can put back, uh, actually when it's parked, you have to hold, push to drive or push to reverse. When you reverse, you can push back to drive. Now here we have uh, drive, if I push forward, it's uh, B for more braking. So you just pull it once or twice. Now uh, to put it to reverse, to show you the backing camera, see the backing camera, it's a quite decent resolution. But again, uh, sometimes the water droplets hide this, it's kind of blurry if it's rainy. And I've noticed that this uh, water from the spoiler is dropping on the rear, so you have to use the wiper quite often. Now, if I go to reverse, just to show you, automatic brake has released. You can see the car maps uh, behind you. It doesn't have front parking sensors for some reason. Then you can just, uh, again, push to drive and go back. And of course, if you move the steering wheel, uh, uh, this uh, kind of moves and shows you. Uh, push it to park, car locks itself. But listen to this, if I don't, turn on the electronic parking brake and the car is still on although it's in park it's going to freak out and it's going to have this very annoying sound listen to this so that was really annoying and then you press the electronic parking brake or just push it up turns on and now it's going to have this so kind of more subtle um also um again i wish it has auto hold uh when you're stationary because it's just going to creep forward and I'd like this to just slightly press. You have to hold it to turn it off. There's another thing that I've maybe thought but can't remember now. Also, the light is warm. You, the car needs to be on if you want to turn these on. Um, I think the 2008 had this in white LED, but I might be mistaken. Um, and the car has a very good turning angle. Also cutting this at some point. Uh, I wanted to mention we have this nice original uh, floor mat. Maybe I missed that. Uh, also, I wanted to set uh, this electric car has a front electric motor. That's front wheel drive, not rear, like most electric cars. It still has a good turning radius. Uh, and also the rear uh, discs, uh, the rear brakes are have discs and not uh, drum brakes. And uh, what I remembered I wanted to mention is that from an electric perspective, it doesn't make no sense to have a start stop uh, button Yes, you can turn on the electronics, but uh, this is probably because of the, again, uh, this car has diesel and petrol version, uh, but it would have more sense if I could just jump in the car, put it to drive and take off, or put it to park and just exit the car and lock it so it turns off uh, itself. Let's go on to the front of the car and exit. So I'm gonna see if I've missed something. I think we covered it mostly just to show you the, some people might be interested in the front hood. So, uh, the opening is kind of over here, more to the left, so you can see this mechanism. And you have to use the little leg, it doesn't have a gas strut, it has a sound insulation on the top. Uh, so this is the electric motor, 136 horsepower equivalent. Um, again, very good for this size of the car. Uh, the blue, dark blue is your washer fluid, this is against, I guess, some sort of coolant, you can see it's washing uh, there, I mean, working so yeah 
Uh, that's it. When you walk away from the car, it locks itself at some point. Um, again, I really like the design of this car. It's very good for the city. It's very nippy on the road. So I quite like it, to be honest. So if you want to see point of view driving, uh, day without talking, you can only hear the car sounds. At night, where I'm going to summon my driving experience, uh, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell not to miss that. Okay, uh, cutting this at the end, just a little tour of the night. And now, here's the car when the lights are off. I'm going to unlock it and turn on the lights. You see those very bright LEDs. These are base LEDs. And we have the puddle lights on the side. Now, uh, my previous location was occupied by cars after the earthquake, they parked away from the buildings. So came here, you see the rear, and just to open the trunk, see the illumination. Um, it's fine, but I would always put two LEDs inside the trunk or cargo area. Now, the back seat is completely in dark because there isn't any illumination on the roof inside the car. And this is like the front um, and jump inside real quick. Unfortunately, alert package doesn't have ambient lights. So um, if we start the car, You can see it's a little bit overexposed on the camera here, but you can see nicely uh, buildings, 3D cockpit and stuff like that. If I focus on the screen, make it a little bit darker. This is more realistic, uh, like this, maybe a little lighter, but uh, the camera is trying to out of focus, uh, of course. And then if we turn on, or is ready now everything illuminates white i have the white dials on the uh, steering wheel and on the bottom and you see electronic brake and this and just to show you the backing camera it's kind of decent so it isn't bad but once it gets uh rain, rainy outside it's very blurry you can't really see too much uh, the camera is almost um I would say useless. So uh, that was a quick tour of the night interior. And if we lock the car, you can see then the turn signals illuminate on Peugeot. Uh, so if you like this review, give it a massive a like, smash the like button. Uh, leave a comment below what do you think about the little 208. I really like to hear your opinions. And um, of course, if you want to see more content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell to get notifications when I upload point of view driving, night point of view driving, and uh, some of my driving part review because it's separated because the video would be like, like too long. You wouldn't be able to see all the good details uh, that I cover that most YouTubers or journalists just skip. And there's small recaps. So uh, as always, stay safe on the road and at home. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.